Hello again, and welcome back to the channel. This is Michael from TOEFLresources.com. And today I want to talk about TOEFL speaking question number four on the new version of the TOEFL. Yes, as you probably already know, the TOEFL has changed. As of August 1st, 2019, there are just four questions in the speaking section of the TOEFL, and this video will help you prepare for the last one of those. In today's video, I'm going to start by talking about the structure of this question. I'll continue by giving you some tips about how to take good notes. I'll give you a template you can use to answer the question. I'll give you a few special tips and tricks that should bring your answer to the next level. I'll give you a complete sample answer. And at the end, I'll talk a little bit about how your score is actually determined. So let's get started by talking about the structure of the question. Now, as I've said in all of my videos, ETS uses pretty much the same structure week after week after week for its questions. This means that every week, the questions look kind of the same. They're put together in the same way. And if you can understand how the questions are actually created, you might have an easier job answering them. Pay careful attention to this part of the video. So, first of all, you're going to listen to a lecture that's between a minute and a half and two minutes long. It's going to be about some academic term or concept, and it's going to be illustrated using two examples or just one example with two clear parts. And by two parts, I mean something like a before and after section or like cause and effect. Keep in mind that the example could be from the speaker's life. It isn't usually, but it could be. The lectures in this section are most often about something related to biology or sociology or business or maybe like history and art. Not a promise, but that's usually what these concepts are about. Now the lecture starts with a short introduction that states and defines what this thing is. That's usually between three and five sentences. After the introduction, the example or examples are given. Now, you are going to be asked a specific question after that that mostly requires you to summarize the examples. I'll give you more specific phrasing for those questions in a minute, but just keep in mind that your job is really mostly to summarize and repeat what you heard in the lecture. So again, here's what the prompts might look something like. Using the example of whatever from the lecture, explain two ways that the lecture subject is beneficial for animals. So in this case, you heard a lecture about some, you know, trait of animals, and you have to explain how the example illustrates that trait that the animals have. Or maybe something like using the points and examples from the lecture, explain what the subject is or using the example of whatever from the lecture, explain the possible effects of whatever the lecture subject is, right? Whatever the concept or term is. Or using the examples of such and such and such and such from the lecture, explain two ways that animals use whatever the subject of the lecture is. So as you can see, you're being asked to use or to summarize the examples and how they illustrate the concept of the lecture. Now you can see sometimes the phrasing is a little bit different depending on whether you get one example or two examples, but it's pretty much exactly the same. Now, uh, you're gonna be given 20 seconds, just 20 seconds to prepare your answer and one minute to speak. Now this is one of them where you, you gotta speak for the whole minute, I mean, there's a lot of details in the lecture. You're gonna have a hard time fitting them all into that minute, but do your best. Today as a sample question to illustrate my strategies, I'm using one from the TOEFL Quick Prep Collection, specifically from volume one, page 25. Look for the question about pricing strategies. This comes direct from ETS, and I'm gonna put a link to it in the video description. I do encourage you to load it up. It's a PDF. 
if you can follow along with the transcript of the lecture, you know, the strategies here might be a little bit more useful and you might get more from the video. Check it out, please. All right, so we get the lecture and we have to take notes. Here on the screen is the sort of notes you're going to try to get from the lecture. Now, I understand these notes are very uh, detailed. This is sort of like a perfect uh, example of taking notes. You're not going to get quite so many notes yourself. I cheated when I made these, but you get the point. You want to get these kind of things. But starting over here, you want to get some notes from that introductory part the three to five sentences that come at the beginning of the lecture. And you want to start by getting just what the subject is, what the academic term or concept is. In this case, it's how companies set an initial product price. And then you want to get some of the detail that comes along with that. Really the definition. In this case, I got that is the price of a product when it first goes on sale. And then you want to get as many notes as you can from the first example or the first part. So first up, you want to get the details, the details of this example. Here I got that they can set a high initial price and then lower it. And then I got a high product price gives the product a positive image. Then I got people know the price will drop, but then pay to get it. And then I got the very specific example they mentioned high-tech products like video recorders, cameras, and cell phones were expensive at first and cheaper later. Now, I won't read all the notes from the second example, but it's pretty much the same thing. I'm getting the details that kind of go with the example, and then I'm getting the very specific thing that they mention. And basically, those are the notes for this question. So, if you check that document, the prompt, the specific prompt for the question we're working with today is using the points and examples from the lecture, explain the two pricing strategies described by the lecturer. Now I've put the prompt after the notes because you don't get the prompt until after you've heard the lecture. Keep that in mind. That means you gotta get as many notes as you can. How to answer the question. Well, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I love a good answer template to give these answers some structure. Now, this is actually the shortest template in my collection because, well, basically question number four isn't exactly template driven. So just take a look at the screen, see what you think about this. There's three parts to my template. First up, you want to state the lecture subject and the detail. And you want to say it's something like this. The lecture is about the lecture subject, which is, and then you fill in the details. Again, these should be in your notes. Next up, you state the first example or the first part using about three to five sentences. And you do it like this. First, the professor notes that, you fill in the details, for example, and then you give the specific example. Three, you state the second example or the second part. Again, in about three to five sentences. Secondly, he says that, you give the details. For instance, you give the specific example. And that's all you really got to do. Note that there's no conclusion in this template. I don't think you should waste any time on that. Just use the three parts you see on the screen. Before I give you my sample answer, a few tips and tricks. Again, if, if you've watched my other videos and with the speaking section, you're probably sick of these tips because it's basically the same for all the uh, questions. But I'll repeat them quickly one more time. First of all, use discourse phrases like as a result or consequently or moreover or therefore in your answer. Those uh, link the sentences, they link the ideas in various sentences, and they are something that the graders are looking for. Next. Focus on the examples most of all. I want you to summarize the introduction in just one sentence. It takes no more than 10 seconds to state. Most of your score comes from your ability to summarize those examples, so really focus on them. Next, create compound sentences using conjunctions like and or but or so. Again, those are good for linking ideas and they make your spoken grammar a little bit more sophisticated. 
Lastly, summarize, summarize, summarize. This isn't a place for your own thoughts or even for logical conclusions. You're really just trying to summarize what you heard in the lecture. That's all you really got to do. So here is a sample answer that uses the template. First of all, I state the lecture subject and the detail. Here's what I got for today's sample question. The lecture is about how companies determine the initial price of a product, which is the price of something when it first goes on sale. I'm just following the template there in purple, and I'm filling in the blanks with my notes, which are in black. Next up, I state the first example or the first part. This is a uh, question with two clear examples, which is most common. First, the professor notes that companies sometimes set a high initial price, which is later lowered. The high price gives consumers a positive impression of the product. They know the price will go down later, but are willing to pay more to get it right away. For example, the professor mentions certain high-tech products. Although things like video cameras, video recorders, and cell phones were all pricey at first, they became much cheaper later on. Again, I'm following the template, which is in purple, and just filling in the blanks with stuff from my notes. I used although, which is a nice discourse phrase, like I mentioned before, to link these ideas, and I used but to create a nice compound sentence. Next up, I state the second example, or the second part. Secondly, he says that companies sometimes set a very low starting price for their goods. This is done when the market is crowded and they need to undercut their competitors. For instance, he mentions a new computer that needs to get market share. As a result of its low price, it will attract people not usually interested in computers. A company can make more money later by selling parts and accessories to these customers. Again, I'm using the template. Secondly, he says that. And for instance, I, uh, I'm using the uh, conjunction and to create another compound sentence here. And I'm using the discourse phrase as a result of to link ideas and make my answer sound a bit more sophisticated. Note how I also changed initial to starting here in the uh, second half of the answer. Uh, that's not a big deal, but I generally encourage students to vary their vocabulary as much as they can. If you repeat the same words again and again and again, you might get a slightly lower score. So do your best to keep your uh, vocabulary as varied as possible. And that's pretty much how you answer the uh, last of the TOEFL speaking questions. Um, if you have any questions about that sample answer or the template, let me know. Before I finish the video, I'm going to talk very quickly about how your score is determined. Now, I am going to make a full length video about this in a few days, so I'll keep my comments here pretty brief. But basically, you get a score between one and four in three different areas. They are delivery, language use, and topic development. Each of these has equal value and they are scored in isolation, but of course, there's going to be some overlap, right? If your uh, delivery is very poor, it might be hard for the grader to understand your topic development. Likewise, if your language use is quite poor, you might have some topic development problems. So nothing is totally in isolation. But basically, delivery refers to how well you speak. That is, how easily the grader can understand what you're saying. If the grader needs to use what they call extra effort to understand your accent, you're probably going to lose some more uh, points. Likewise, if there's a lot of long pauses, if your speech is very choppy and you're stopping for a few seconds in between words, you're going to get a lower score for delivery. Language use refers mostly to the grammatical correctness of your spoken English and your ability to use slightly more complex grammatical forms like, as I said, compound sentences. If you're making a lot of grammar mistakes or your sentences are way too simplistic, you're going to lose some points in the language use section. Lastly is the topic development. That's basically how well you can answer the question, the accuracy of your details, how well you can link those details together in logical ways. So. 
That's all I have to say about the last TOEFL speaking question. But if you have any questions for me, leave a comment down below. I'll answer them as soon as I can. For more of this kind of stuff, of course, you can subscribe to the channel or you can check me out at tofelresources.com. That is my website and it contains uh, guides to all the speaking and all the writing questions. And you can even sign up there to have your practice essays or speaking recordings graded and evaluated by me. Costs a little bit of money, but it's a service that a lot of students seem to really like. So I mention it here. That's all I'm going to mention now, but thanks again for watching all the way to the end of the video. You know how much that means to me. Take care, guys, and I'll see you later.